Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this. Uh, well, it's hot here in Memphis. It's hot Memphis morning. Um, we are happy to have Dr. Naveen Kumar, who is a faculty in information systems at the University of Washington, uh, which is where he received his PhD with a key focus in developing machine learning and analytic, analytics methods, analytics methods, after which he spent some time working for Intel. And then he actually was a faculty member here at the University of Memphis uh, for about three years, a little over three years, at which point he returned back to Washington and is now a faculty member with an expertise in big data, machine learning and artificial intelligence, excuse me. Um, if you do have any questions, like I said in the chat box, please feel free to type them out in the chat function or in the Q&A section. Uh, while Dr. Kumar is giving his um, presentation, I'll be muted in the background, but we'll be monitoring them and we'll interject with any questions he may have, or excuse me, any questions that are posed. So uh, without further ado, Dr. Kumar, uh, please take it away. Thank you very much. So good morning, everybody. Hope everyone is doing great. So before we go into the specifics of presentation, uh, let me share my screen. Okay, so today we are going to have discussion about analytics, you know, how analytics is playing an important role in today's dig digital world and specifically uh, in COVID-19 era, you know, we are, uh, how we are uh, using analytics or how analytics can help us in going through, in overcoming some of the hurdles we are facing these days. So that's what, uh, you know, this discussion is going to be. Uh, here, uh, I have put together high level agenda items, you know, what we are going to cover. Uh, I'll give high level introduction of uh, digital world and what are some of the mega trends we are seeing these days and upcoming mega trends, uh, more or less, you know, at a consumer level, uh, you know, as, as I just mentioned, COVID-19 has completely changed the way we used to operate and how technology can help us in uh, making things, in doing things uh, better or even, you know, more efficiently. And uh, it was for, uh, means I just learned that uh, some of uh, us may not have, uh, uh, you know, background about analytics or uh, we may be just new to analytics. So I just uh, put together a slide or two just to give some perspective of uh, different types of analytics and how, uh, you know, different uh, types of analytics can provide different types of uh, insights in COVID-19 era and uh, some of the key resources where we can find latest and greatest information about analytics and how some of the companies uh, are leveraging analytics to provide, provide insight into uh, you know, some of the trends in COVID-19 space. Then uh, you know, summary, I'll just briefly uh, summarize what we discussed and uh, you can ask me questions. Also, if there are questions in between, uh, you know, please feel free to uh, write your questions in the chat box and we will uh, answer your questions. Okay, so, uh, you know, we all know that COVID-19 and, and uh, before COVID-19, digital, digital competition has forced us to do things differently. So, you know, given we are interacting right now, we are at geographically, uh, you know, different places. So who is enabling this conversation? You know, it's all about technology, right? Technology has helped us to do things better, or more efficiently, and these days we also call it remotely, right? So with the help of technology, even, you know, uh, there are some cities uh, in which we see completely complete lockdown and most of the industries, uh, you know, uh, they are uh, allowing their employees to work from home and it's all happening because of technology, right? So, uh, you know, laptops, PCs, all those devices are not going to go away, but on top of it, now we are also relying more on mobile devices to not only just to do, you know, formal work, but also to interact with each other, to do some casual conversation or, or more or less, you know, doing, uh, means we are doing socializing with the help of uh, technology. Right. So on top of it, the boundaries between work and leisure time, you know, are blurring. So we can 
start working you know whenever we would like to and we can stop working so you know if we didn't have access to technology it would be very difficult to operate specifically in covid 19 uh, you know when the, in, when we see you know lots and lots of cases of covid 19 so technology is playing a huge role as an enabler uh, by which you know we can uh, we can get the work done and you know like many years ago uh, people who used to have uh, land capital labor they uh, you know they used to I mean, we used to consider them very powerful or you know people of very you know high value or importance but these days technology you know is helping us in acquiring a lot of data and with the help of data we can you know, derive meaningful information and make you know decisions about uh, any critical decision that we would like to make so technology and data information is playing very crucial role these days okay. so we are going to see some of the you know trends in the coming uh, you know coming months and years some of those trend, trends uh, were already you know uh, trending up or some of you know so but in the next uh, few months and years especially at a consumer level we are going to see some of the trends that at least we might be we should be aware about so data right so at a very fundamental level uh, data you know with the help of all mo mobile devices and with all you know sensors these days we are collecting data at a very very rapid pace and just raw data by itself may not have any value when we process data we can turn data into transformation and on top of it if we apply some business knowledge if we uh, put some context around data we should be able to turn data into meaningful information and knowledge which is what you know businesses are leveraging these days and a uh, lot of new covid-19 specific apps are coming up in the market and uh, you know farms and or companies are collecting data in the background and there are many different uses of uh, covid-19 uh, you know related apps that we are seeing these days and i'll talk a little bit more about how some of the companies are leveraging data in the background you know as per one of the surveys that was conducted in 2018 it was uh, you know about 33 zettabyte of data was generated and consumed so when i say zettabyte it's equivalent to you know 1 trillion gigabyte so in other words about 33 trillion gigabytes of data was generated or consumed in 2018 and as per that survey the forecast was that the data would grow to about 175 zettabyte by 2025 and that was before covid-19 and now as per the new estimate that you know this uh, this uh, earlier estimate about 175 zettabyte byte would you know means we would have way more than uh, this data so it opens up huge opportunities for firms to leverage data and to provide key insight that earlier you know was not possible okay and uh, you know from the data you know just continuing on the data side so just people who are not aware about what this big data means. Uh, traditionally, we are defining big data as data that is uh, very, you know, uh, that is getting generated at a very rapid pace and tons and tons of data is being generated. So the amount of data so that we are not able to store that data in one machine and also huge variety of data. You know, Medical data, text data, you know, the, like we, or the data we generate, you know, on Facebook. So different types of data get generated. So all the data that we are not able to store in one machine comes under the definition of big data. And you know, the the analytics techniques that were uh, developed uh, and implemented many years ago. At a fundamental level, those techniques may remain the same, but now we have to think differently in terms of how 
implement those techniques at a very low scale. The challenges associated with big data comes into coming to picture. So, as per the you know mega trends, we have seen companies have leveraged cloud computing uh, at a very large extent. But at a consumer level, also we are going to see rapid increase in usage of cloud computing, not only in the United States but across the world. Now consumers are getting into the habit of using their mobile devices and using you know uh, or leveraging cloud to interact with the people, uh, you know, to do video con conversation. You know, like few years ago. It was very difficult, say, for elderly people to use technology to, to interact with people. But now, what the reports are coming out is that the even the elderly people, when they are not able to see other people face to face, they are using uh, you know technology and some of the cloud computing uh, you know apps to interact with other people. Uh, they are not able to meet physically. So we are going to see you know. Uh, quite significant increase in usage of cloud computing as we go forward, not only in the United States, but in the developing countries as well. So the advantage of cloud computing is that, uh, you know, we don't need to install anything locally, locally on, on our devices. We can leverage cloud. We can, you know, uh, we can use the apps that are available on the cloud or we can use, say, for example, you know, uh, like uh, applications such as we, we all use on a day-to-day uh, -day basis, Gmail or Google Docs. The advantage is that, you know, uh, that uh, we don't need to buy specific licenses uh, to install those apps on our devices. We can pretty much use clouds and we can, uh, we can basically pay as we consume those applications. And in the background, a lot of data gets generated Again, that opens up uh, opportunities uh, for companies to analyze that data and uh, reach out to specific uh, consumers based on uh, the pattern of, uh, you know, of usage or pattern of use, you know, usage of that data or the way they interact with the apps. And next trend, you know, increase in usage of uh, mobile devices. Again, at a consumer level, uh, like the mobile devices usage has has gone up quite significantly. And uh, in the developing countries, you know, mobile devices are leapfrogging traditional PCs. It also opens up opportunities for firms to reach out to consumers uh, pretty much, uh, you know, 24 by seven. Uh, so they can see, you know, what, uh, what uh, you know, sites or uh, what, uh, you know, what specific uh, usage of uh, of uh, you know mobile devices those consumers are having, and uh, as at a consumer level, basically mobile devices have enabled us to do things differently. So think about situation when we have to go to a new city uh, instead of you know uh, instead of uh, relying tradition uh, relying on traditional ways to find out say for example which restaurant we might be interested in visiting we can just leverage on our mob mobile devices and see you know what are the restaurants nearby and where we can go we can see their ratings how other people have you know reviewed those restaurants so mobile devices have opened up lot more opportunities than we could think about and there are you know apps that are being developed uh, specifically in COVID-19 context, uh, those apps can give us information about which areas are high COVID-19, you know, uh, in, uh, in which areas where we see more COVID-19 cases or which areas, you know, we see less COVID-19 cases. So all those with the help of visualization techniques, uh, we have access to that information on our mobile devices. But at the same time, you know, mobile, mobile devices uh, opens up a lot of security related concerns. Uh, you know, uh, there are reports that have been published in which, uh, you know, in which specifically on Android malware and Android operating systems. So there are a lot of, uh, uh, you know, malware, there are a lot of apps that have malware installed on it. 
so we need to be careful in terms of you know what apps we install on our mobile devices and what apps not to install on our mobile devices the other trend we see is huge increase in the usage of social media so i have put just historical information that over 4.6 billion facebook users share their status update or pictures with friends or families and also companies are leveraging the power of a crowd uh, by social media they are basically using social media to see or to observe the usage patterns of different users uh, at a consumer level we are using social media say whatsapp app by which we can interact with uh, with other people around the world uh, use you know we can do video chat or we can you know we are using linkedin uh, to connect professionally with other people uh, or with facebook we can connect with uh, friends and also companies are using you know social media they are uh, they run different advertising campaigns using uh, you know the social media so social media usage uh, is going up and uh, also we we will see uh, you know that pattern keeps going up and up and up so there are huge opportunities from business perspective and also from consumers perspective to uh, to use social media and to keep an eye on social media in terms of you know what consumers are uh, doing and uh, not only what consumers are doing uh, companies are also using social media internally to promote innovation or to promote uh, you know uh, discussions uh, among employees in terms of uh, you know different uh, say for example products or services co companies are going to launch what employees think about those products or services or to get you know employees opinion on so many other things that companies can think of so social media usage uh, we'll we are seeing you know uh, going up and we'll keep you know we will uh, see that happening more and more so as i was discussing that uh, we have access to data and we can apply analytics techniques to derive meaningful information from the data but we need to make sure that we apply business knowledge so that we can you know make critical decisions about the uh, we can about the specific business that we are operating in so it is very important to apply business information or business knowledge on the you know analysis that we do so that uh, you know so that we can uh, basically you know uh, put data to uh, you know we can put data uh, to uh, some useful context and make critical decisions example is you know uh, for example uh, just like if we make recommendation engines by which we can uh, provide recommendation about our products to different consumers and if consumers are visiting our you know e-commerce website but the recommendation engine takes say one minute to make any meaningful conversation most likely even if the recommendations are great those recommendations are not going to put not going to be used in the real world because it is taking too much of time so we need to you know understand in terms of how we can apply business information along with the analytics knowledge that we derive from the data so it's important that uh, that we keep in mind the you know business knowledge in the context of data that we are analyzing and data can come into various different shapes data could be in a structured format in which we get you know say for example data in a you know tabular format it's all well formed numeric data come in rows and columns or it could rows and column format or it could be unstructured data where you know we have access to what uh, consumers are talking about our product or services you know, data comes in uh, like consumers are posting pictures or consumers are writing you know text or comments so you know there are many different analytical techniques depending on the type of data that we come across or type of data that we need to analyze so from the uh, analytic skill set perspective at a very very high level uh, in order to you know be good in analyzing data we need to have quantitative skills 
or we may find people with specific uh, quantitative skills, statistics skills, math, operations research, or we may find uh, people with very good computer science skills. They, they may be good in uh, you know, developing algorithms, very good in writing programs, or very good in managing different databases. And the third category, which we should not undermine is having business or domain expertise, which is extremely critical uh, in data science space. So basically data science or business analytics is at a combination of uh, having skill sets uh, you know, on, on, in math or statistics or computing skill sets and having business or domain expertise. That is where data scientists can play a, a huge role in making an, a, an impact in any in a business setting. And from the types of analytics, uh, at a very high level, uh, typically we see like four different types of uh, analytics techniques, uh, prescriptive analytics, descriptive analytics, uh, so, uh, sorry, descriptive, predictive, prescriptive, in, and inferential analytics. And I'll just talk about what those techniques are at a very high level so that we can see how those techniques are being used in real world applications and also in COVID-19 space. Uh, that is what we are observing in the beginning. Analysts relied on descriptive analytics to find out what was going on or what is going on. And then slowly new apps are coming up uh, in which uh, data scientists are using predictive analytics techniques to predict how different, uh, to predict future or to predict where the trend is you know, headed going forward. Uh, so we'll just have brief discussion about each of these techniques and see how these techniques are useful in a business setting. Okay, so first is uh, descriptive analytics. Uh, it's a way of arranging, summarizing, and presenting data in a very convenient and informative way. These are very simple, but very powerful techniques that are being used to uncover different patterns or provide insights. Example is, you know, monitoring COVID-19 trends. How, uh, you know, COVID-19 cases are uh, uh, going, whether you know cases are going up or going down in different geographical regions, we can summarize that information uh, using this different descriptive analytic techniques. Uh, for example, we are seeing you know, many many new websites are popping up or dashboards. Uh, you know, different companies or different individuals are developing by which they are using different graphical techniques or different numerical techniques to summarize uh, you know, what's going on in COVID-19 uh, space these days. You know, what are the cities in which we are seeing more cases or whether we are seeing downward trend? All those things we can uh, capture using descriptive analytics techniques. Uh, you know, like we can go to you know, Microsoft website. They have a very nice dashboard uh, where they are capturing COVID-19 cases across the globe or John Hopkins is also a you know, university, it's also a great resource. Uh, they are providing, you know, very nice uh, dashboard uh, by which we can see how COVID-19 is trending uh, these days. And uh, we can see how nicely, you know, the, some of the descriptive analytics techniques uh, are being used to capture these trends. Then the next level of uh, analytics is called predictive analytics. So, uh, you know, descriptive, predictive, prescriptive, or inferential analytics. Basically, these are kind of, you know, different levels of maturity curve by which uh, different companies uh, adopt these analytics techniques. So after descriptive analytics, the next thing is predictive analytics. Given in the descriptive analytics, you know, we have summarized data, we got more intimate to the data. We get to know the nuances or some of the issues that, uh, we could see in real world data, for example, missing values. So we have pre-processed data in, uh, you know, and applied some of the descriptive analytics techniques. We have, you know, companies spend 60 to 70 percent of time pre-processing data, applying descriptive analytics techniques, just getting to know what that data, you know, what kind of story that data may tell. 
uh, then it's a time for applying predictive analytics uh, predictive analytics uh, techniques depending on the uh, business questions that we may have in mind some of the you know techniques related to predictive analytics might be supervised machine learning techniques such as logistic regression naivis some of the deep learning techniques uh, and uh, you know there are many different use cases uh, outside of covid 19 so if companies are using predictive analytics techniques to see which products consumer may buy or to see how you know the revenue forecast for the next quarter in covid 19 space you know a uh, lot of organizations are using predictive analytics techniques to predict different fatalities or mortality you know or or the number of uh, beds needed in icus so you know that kind of prediction is being done using predictive analytic techniques but as as i just mentioned before we get into predictive analytic techniques uh, it's important to spend significant amount of time and efforts uh in pre processing data and uh, in applying some of the descriptive analytics techniques so that we we can become more intimate to the data and we can see you know what was happening in the historical data that we have access to okay so i was talking about inferential analytics so in inferential analytics we try to make estimation or prediction about the whole population based on the sample so in real world we may not have access to the entire population or even if we have access to the entire population it might be uh, too expensive or too time consuming to reach out to each individual in the population and you know and uh, check about the specific characteristics of interest so for example exit poll right in exit poll uh, what companies or what uh, firms do they, they talk to people coming out from the polling station and they they interview them and based on that specific sample of people uh, companies interview they try to make an inference about the candidate who may or the party who may potentially win and uh, and same uh, use cases uh, you know are being uh, used in pharma pharmaceutical industry say for example uh, in uh, in new drug development the tests are being conducted on a specific set of samples of people and based on the outcome or in terms of how a specific drug is uh, is perform is you know being perform means how specific drug is operating or behaving based on that uh, you know it's being released to the entire population so what we do in inferential analytics is that we operate at specific sample level and based on the outcome we observe from the sample we try to make an inference about the entire population uh, in, you know on the tech industry side companies use uh, inferential analytics to you know when uh, to test whether specific changes on the website would have any impact on the consumer or not so what they do is that they make specific change on on a web page uh, for a specific set of audience or specific you know at a specific geographical location and based on if they see more hit in or you know or uh, or uh, say in terms of uh, conversion if they see more conversion using that specific change they make on the on a specific web page on e-commerce website then based on that they try to make an inference about how all other users are going to behave and based on that they decide hey whether it's a good idea to roll out that change or not but behind the scene it's all inferential analytics that is being used to you know in different areas uh, be you know in pharmaceutical industry or in uh, you know conducting exit polls or in conducting ab testing by which you know companies make decision whether to roll out specific change to the entire audience or not okay so i have put together some of the interesting resources that are being available these days to uh, have more exposure on data science first one is kaggle kaggle.com and i'll talk a little bit more about kaggle.com uh, because 
uh, we see a lot of interesting data sets related to COVID-19 that are being posted on Kaggle and millions and millions of users are, uh, are jumping on Kaggle and they are analyzing that data. The other one, people who are not very familiar with uh, data science is a website called towardsdatascience.com uh, that have very interesting posts in terms of, you know, from basic levels to the advanced levels in data science space. And then KD Nuggets is another interesting website. Analytics Vidya uh, is uh, another one where we see a lot of uh, you know, articles from basic analytics to advanced analytics. Uh, you know, we can uh, review and study and internalize. And also people uh, who are, uh, you know, trying to make career uh, in data science or, you know, join, you know, data science area. It's a good idea to keep an eye on LinkedIn customized job alert. And on top of it, uh, Microsoft has, uh, you know, active grant uh, by which, you know, they are providing access to Azure. Um, so if somebody is interested in uh, analyzing COVID-19 specific data or, or need Azure uh, resources for uh, in the context of COVID-19, so Microsoft uh, provides, you know, uh, credit to access uh, Azure framework. Okay, so now now I will spend some time in terms of uh, just providing you know specifics how analytics is being used in COVID-19. First resource, as I mentioned in the last slide, is Kaggle.com. Kaggle is currently hosting many different data science challenges. So the focus is on helping medical community to understand COVID-19 trends. More than you know, five million users are participating in those competitions. So, if you have time, if you uh, if you want to uh, you know analyze apply uh, analytics techniques in COVID nineteen space, and if you are looking for data that a lot of companies or a lot of nonprofit are sharing, you can access those data sets using Kaggle.com. So I briefly discussed about, uh, you know, first uh, type of analytics techniques that is uh, descriptive analytics. We have seen that uh, companies or, in, or individuals using or starting with descriptive analytics in understanding, uh, you know, different COVID-19 trends. And, uh, uh, you know, as I said, there are many competitions going on in Kaggle on uh, COVID-19 space. So one of them is how best to summarize COVID-19 literature using natural language processing techniques. We have seen surge in terms of uh, uh, academic articles being published uh, after the outbreak of COVID-19. There are more than 28,000 papers have been published and it's been very difficult or almost impossible for an individual to comprehend what's going on in those papers. Uh, and, uh, you know, analytics is being very useful in that context in order to figure out what's going on, uh, in order to catch up with the recent trends. Uh, at a very high level, we could use analytics to find answers such as what are the most popular research areas within COVID-19 space that different researchers are focusing on. What's the number of uh, publications you know, per week? How many articles are coming up every week? And who are the mo you know, most prolific, prolific authors and what they are publishing in? What's, you know, what are different types of topics they are talking about? All that information is very useful. And we don't need to use very advanced analytics techniques to capture uh, you know, that, uh, that information. So we can rely on descriptive analytics. We need to know what kind of descriptive analytics are being available under what situation specific descriptive techniques we can use and what kind of information we can derive uh, from using specific type of descriptive analytics techniques that we see you know, uh, usage of descriptive analytics uh, very often in any new phenomenon or in any new study uh, any researchers or any practitioner, you know, start working on. So descriptive analytics uh, is the first step 
uh, in data science that most of the you know analysts use next level in covid 19 space you know on specifically on uh, kaggle competitions uh, we see usage of predictive analytics to predict for example covid 19 infections and fatalities for various regions so but the most fundamental question is why do we need to apply those predictive analytics techniques so we need to be aware about the you know uh, how best to convert uh, the, or you know at a first level why we are using uh, those predictive analytics techniques how those predictive analytics techniques could help us in making specific business decisions so in this case you know if uh, if we are interested in predicting covid-19 infections it may help uh, decision makers uh, you know to plan for hospitalizations and number of beds needed in icus to respond to specific crisis uh, or whether you know we should expect increase uh, in rate of infections of covid-19 go going forward or it's going to go down there are you know like university of washington has active model by which they are trying to predict you know the covid-19 cases going forward one thing to keep in keep in mind that uh, you know all analytics models by definition don't provide us you know results with 100% accuracy so we typically uh, you know say that hey all models are wrong some models are better than others so we should keep in uh, you know keep that fact in our mind that, that you know that there is always going to be some uncertainty or in some cases a lot of uncertainty there is no guarantee that analytics can comprehend all that uncertainty in the model you know some models can uh, comprehend uncertainty better than the other but there is always going to be uncertainty in the real world and because of that uh, we see you know analytics model may not be able to uh, deliver the result at a level that we are expecting or in some cases you know if the incoming data doesn't have signals that we are looking for then we are not then the model is not going to predict accurately what the expected output should be we also call it garbage in garbage out so all those nuances we should uh, keep in mind when uh, applying analytics in any specific domain of interest so you know there are uh, companies as i mentioned in the beginning i will discuss some of the i was i'm planning to discuss some of the you know uh, companies that are developing analytic specific apps or dashboard uh, in covid-19 context these days so uh, one example is you know microsoft artificial intelligence for health microsoft is leading these efforts by which they are also helping uh, you know a lot of uh, organizations in analytics space uh, so that we can you know uh, derive meaningful information about covid-19 and um, uh, you know let me just uh, see if i can share that you know dashboard that microsoft has and again you know this is not just the only dashboard there are a lot of uh, other uh, dashboard we see these days so, so this, this is you know one of the dashboards uh, that microsoft has developed by which we can see you know how covid-19 is trending up across the world and you know how many confirmed cases we see how many deaths and uh, you know we can see you know this information by country or uh, you know within a country we can see you know state level uh, trend we can see uh, in terms of number of deaths or number of confirmed cases so all that information is available using dashboards and as i was emphasizing that hey how descriptive analytics that is you know graphical measures or visualization techniques as well as some of the numerical summary measures that we see how those simple techniques could be used in in getting some insights about what's going on okay so in this case we can see that it's a heat map of the you know united states based on the number of cases that we see so the you know uh, in terms of the number of deaths sorry so here as we see that you know as the number of deaths 
uh, going up uh, that is being represented with a little bit you know bold color or darker color so the point i'm trying to make is that this you know in any new phenomenon or in any new study that we start uh, you know working on first techniques that we typically follow on is descriptive analytics okay so the other example about descriptive analytics is you know there is a company called take that's a brazilian company that company is working on developing chatbots the purpose or the intent of developing chatbot is to connect potential uh, patients with the medical team so the advantage is to or the purpose is to avoid overloading of hospitals or icus so it's a kind of a pre intervention by which different you know patients could be connected to the medical teams uh, over you know over the internet and uh, at least with that we may expect you know some reduction in terms of you know number of people uh, you know visiting hospitals the other uh, specific use case or app uh, that uh, other companies working on is darwin ai company so which is working in terms of uh, developing artificial intelligence solution to detect covid-19 from chest x-ray images so you know by taking images of chest x-ray uh, and applying artificial intelligence or analytics techniques that company is trying to detect and predict you know covid-19 so that is another example of uh, um, of uh, applying analytics techniques in covid-19 space then uh, the, the next one is uh, you know new york university they have come up with mobile app and that mobile app is currently being used with a clinician to have covid-19 diagnosis what that uh, mobile app is doing is uh, it's basically applying some of the analytics techniques and coming up with a severity score based on the biomarkers high severity score means high chance of mortality for covid-19 so that app is also being used these days uh, in new york area to uh, you know to predict or to detect covid-19 cases the another example is uh, benevolent uh, artificial intelligence there this company is working on developing algorithm that is proposing you know new compounds to fight against covid-19 and uh, that you know that is being that work is uh, right now with uh, you know their company is working with the us government right now to conduct clinical clinical trials and to observe the effect of some of these proposed solutions so amazon came up with the solution by which they are able to identify high congested areas within their warehouses and that is helping managers uh, to provide or to implement additional measures by which uh, social distancing uh, could be improved so behind the scene that application is using artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques to analyze the camera camera footage footages they receive from different buildings so it is helping decision makers to see you know which areas uh, uh you know they can redesign so that social distancing can be implemented appropriately another example is you know the, in the previous case that that is happen that analysis is being happening offline by which you know uh, the application analyze historical data and it's provi it provides uh, uh, basically key insights or information to the decision maker the next scenario uh, the other scenario is where they are using uh you know data on a real time basis uh, to promote social distancing is uh, they have developed an app with the help of artificial intelligence and augmented reality they are creating a kind of magic mirror like tool uh, if the two people uh, you know come in close proximity then that application alerts that hey that you are uh, getting too close to each other and uh, it basically helps people to Uh, follow you know social distancing so that is another you know 
uh, example of uh, using artificial intelligence and augmented uh, AR or augmented reality techniques to develop applications by which people can maintain social distancing on a real time basis. I think that's what I wanted to cover. Um, and now I will take questions if you have any. So we have about six minutes left. So I'll be more than happy to take questions. Yes, thank you, Davina. It was very informative and very, uh, thank you for all the uh, uh, um, references there at the end of the, uh, and examples at the different points of your presentation. The University of Memphis, our mobile data to knowledge center of excellence has also developed an app with regards to social distancing and uh, COVID-19 statistics, it's called mContain. Um, I think, uh, Naveen, one of my, uh, I know we don't have a lot of time here, but one question I have um, is with regards to kind of the future of data science, you gave uh, a couple of different areas, interpretive analytics, predictive analytics. What's kind of the future of data science? Is it um, more app-based development? Is it more web-based development? Is it is it just kind of all over the place? Or how, how can we expect to see data science being implemented more and more into everyday life? Yeah, I think uh, there has been uh, uh, quite like discussion about uh, data science democratization. Mm -hmm. So how we can put data science in, a, in the hands of each individual consumer or within an organization how we can enable employees to do data analytics. And depending on at what level of analytics maturity curve an organization is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, the approach would be based on that. So there are, I have seen, you know, companies which are way ahead of the curve and there are other companies which are, uh, you know, still in the beginning phase of uh, data <coughs> analytics. But I think uh, having a good understanding of analytics maturity curve is going is very important for decision makers uh, to have uh, you know uh, insights into what it takes, what would it take to implement or to bring analytics culture in an organization, uh, and it's a journey. You know, one needs to start from the beginning. Uh, you know, it takes time to build analytics infrastructure uh, in an organization and to build a team of analytics people. But as long as decision makers uh, have good understanding of uh, analytics maturity curve and what are some of the nuances and you know, issues that organizations see in, uh, in analytics space, I think that's how uh, it's going to go in the future as well. Great. Is there any chance that, or, or I'll follow up on that point, um, the kind of transition we see it more in sports where you see teams go from more of uh, I'll give baseball as, as an example, right? You know, you have scouts who go out and look at a player and say this, we predict this player is going to do perform X, Y, Z, you know, he has mm -hmm. these, you know, advantages, these disadvantages. And then, you know, analytics kind of took over and said, let's look at this from a data driven perspective. And there was a lot of pushback on that because it kind of took the emotional component out of it. Right. When companies make that transition from saying, okay, you know, we're going to, you know, when they start inputting analytics or data science software or methodology into their, you know, into their IT environments or just into the kind of their culture of their company, what are things they need to be aware of so that they're not, you know, they don't go 100% one way and then everyone pushes back saying this is too analytics driven. Right, right. I think that's a great question. And uh there has been you know lot of discussion lot you know discussion has happened in this space so the question is uh, whether to keep human in the loop or let make analytics you know all the decisions that uh, analytics can make in an automatic fashion right so i think mm -hmm. also it it comes down to analytics maturity curve in the beginning we should keep human in the loop as we are going through, as we have more confidence in the technology, then slowly the role of human will be minimized, but it's not going to go completely away. So we should always keep human in the loop. At the end of the day, it's the human who make decisions. So you know, analytics or technology is an enabler by which mm -hmm. analytics can provide you know, recommendations, but it's at the end of the day, 
it's a human or decision maker makers who have to make the decision you know even in the sports example that you have provided there are a lot of nuances that analytics may not be able to capture with right. 100% accuracy so that is where you know uh, we call it you know we should not undermine uh, or underestimate the power of human being right so at the end of the day you know the information or mo- knowledge that we have in our head we can supplement you know we can supplement analytics with that and uh, make critical decisions right well i think we've just about run out of time here so i want to thank you and i want to thank all of our attendees who uh, attended this will be posted on our fedex institute of technology uh, website afterwards the recording of this uh, of dr kumar's uh, discussion today and then uh, dr kumar uh, will be are you okay with us posting your powerpoint presentation for for dissemination or, or will that be uh, posted and that'll be posted at a later time so uh, thank you again dr kumar and thank you everybody please visit our website www.memphis.edu slash FedEx uh, for more information and for upcoming events. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.